Alright, hi everyone, welcome back to another U quiz. I'm still figuring out the editing, but I mean, that's just kind of the perpetual state of this channel. Also, my chair might be making noises. I gotta figure something out there, too, but that is something to do in the future. Today, we're doing, um, Why Are You the Way You Are? I'm sure you've always wanted to know. This is a quiz by Satori25, and let's uh, jump into it here. Alright, so question one is what does a positive attitude mean to you? The first option is being kind and honest. Being kind makes sense. Um, being honest, not necessarily, like, related to a positive attitude, you know? You gotta lie, sometimes you just, like, express your positive nature by lying, you know? Just, like, it's a very natural process, I think. You know, I know personally I express my, um, positivity through lying, but then again, I just express everything that way, so that might not be a good comparison. A second option is we ball. I don't get what this is like. I don't get what this means. Like, I know this is like some meme thing that I don't quite have a point of reference for. The formatting is pretty weird, and the fact that they, like, chose to censor it, too. Like, I chose to skip over it to respect that, you know? Okay, well, that's what it says as a meaning. I, I guess, I mean... The thing is, I don't really see what the difference is between that and the third option, which is trying my best even when I'm not confident. They both seem to have, like, the same kind of meaning, like they're trying to convey the same thing, just one is, like, more direct than the other. I mean, I guess we'll go for the last option just to, like, keep things YouTube friendly, whatever that means. I messed up there, I'm not paying attention. Second question is choose a class to take. The first option is gaslighting your loved ones 220. 220 is clearly meant to be like the class number, but it doesn't give what the subject is. I mean, I guess from the context it would probably be, you know, like psychology. The thing is though, like, I wouldn't need to take a course on this, you know, like, I'm already, I know what I'm doing when it comes to, like, those kind of interpersonal relationships. You know, and the thing is, too, like, the whole term gaslighting like, has been kind of, like, oversaturated, like, beyond just its use as a meme now. You know, it's become one of those Twitter words that people like to just say whenever anything bad happens to them, so if you're going to take a course like this, I guess you gotta see, like, what kind of angle they're talking about, because especially if they just mean, like, not being fully direct, or not even, like, just not saying what you want to hear, that's probably not a useful course to take. Because, I mean, that would be, like, the Twitter take on it. The second option is intro to becoming an influencer. I am kind of going down that path in the vaguest sense, and I'm clearly doing something wrong, although I have a feeling they mean more like the... Instagram version of influencer, which I mean, Instagram is kind of becoming less and less of a thing, isn't it? Which I think is probably for the best. I think most people would agree with that. That's not a very uh, controversial statement. Like, I don't know why pe whenever people talk about things like that, they always try to like phrase it like they're coming up with something new. Like, I think social media is bad. But like, you know, Instagram, the whole influencer and that kind of context, that whole scene has been kind of linked to like pretty strong immediate negative mental health conditions. You know what I'm trying to get at. So, and besides, it's a 101 course, so like it's probably not going to get into anything too like useful or groundbreaking for you. And the last course is Advanced Jaywalking Arts. Which sounds like the most useful. It's a 450, it's a 400 level class, so, you know, you're learning some, like, arcane techniques. And I think, you know, I don't want to say anything too controversial, but I think jaywalking is, like, morally correct. You know, especially, J the term jaywalking implies that it's, like, in a city. And, you know, I like the whole anti-car centric movement that's been going on. I think you should be able to just, like, walk wherever in a city, you know? Given that the term jaywalking too implies that this is, like, illegal, this means you're, like, combating the uh, police force in doing this, which I think is pretty cool. So 
uh, definitely a big plus for me on on this choice. So especially given how lame the other two options are, this is I think what we'll go for. Third option, third question is okay, choose an elective. I don't know what an elective is, so I'm gonna look it up real quick. Okay, so it's just, it's an option, it's an optional course. In here in Canada at least, we always just call them options. And the first um, elective, I guess, is the History of Clown Museums 120. And let me tell you, I live in a clown museum, so I don't think I want to like, you know, I don't want to bring my home life into whatever this is going to be. I'm already as well versed with this kind of thing as I would like to be. Although that being said, it's not about clown museums in the present, it's about like, the history of clown museums. So like, you know, you get to like compare like yourself to the, um, you get to compare your own current situation to like a historical one. So you know, maybe it'll help you like navigate the situation a bit better. The second option is the ethics of ear piercings. I am not really into that, but a lot of people, well, a couple people, a few people in my family are. And you know, like, I, it's a pretty common thing. I think it seems like a kind of course that would have a lot of, like, good applications in the real world, but it's not really something that would directly, like, be useful for me. Because, like, even if I could, like, show that a certain piercing is immoral, what am I going to do about it? You know, am I just going to go and, like, rip the ear the earrings out like it seems like once you have the ethics sorted out or at least like have a better grasp on them i don't know if i'd be able to like act on those moral imperatives which you know might be a bit kind of like an incentive not to know in the first place and the third option is coffee tasting for tea drinkers i'm you know i'm ambidextrous i can drink both so like in a way, this wouldn't be directly applicable for me, but, you know, I guess you get to, like, explore the whole duality there, which always is kind of weird to me. Like, like, why are coffee and tea considered, like, opposites? Like, they're just two random plants that happen to make good drinks, you know? They're, there's no, like, you can't take the opposite of plants normally. This is also a 125 course, by the way. Like, they're all 100 level courses, and they're all 120 something, which it makes me kind of wonder if they're all part of the same, like, higher course, or like, higher subject, I guess. Like, if there's one degree you would be going for, that would, you would be expected to take courses like this along the way. Maybe, like, being uh, getting a degree and being a professional Tumblr person. In which case, the um, history of clown museums would make a lot more sense as a course, you know? But I think I'm gonna go for coffee tasting for tea drinkers just cause like... Thinking back to like my, I'm getting my first degree in college, I think a course where you just like drink stuff would be fun cause like... At the very least for me, all the courses were courses where you drink something, you know? Just depends on like what rules your teacher has and how good you are at avoiding them. Question four is choose an outfit to wear to the park. How many choices do we have? Four. Okay, the first one is like this weird coat that almost looks like a carpet or a rug. And then you got these like stripy pants with that go up really high like old people with like suspenders and their pants are like way up. That's kind of like the placement they've got their pants. And for the shirt, I don't even know, like, it looks like just a continuation of whatever's happening below. This whole outfit, it really is giving me, like, you know, the vibe is like one of those carpets they have at, like, the front door of, like, a dentist's or something where you can, like, wipe off your shoes or whatever. Like, I'd be kind of scared to wear this out in public because I think people would try to, like, clean off their shoes on me, although they kind of treat me like that anyways. I'm going joker mode here. The second one is this like red suit thing with this weird heart-shaped cutout in the middle. First off, it looks kind of like the overall outfit aesthetic looks like a really dumb devil costume. Like when you kind of see from that one weird cartoon thing that came out like Hasbro Hotel or whatever. The heart shape cutout, not only does it not look good, 
But you know, it's a very clear like weakness in the structure. Like like if someone was gonna attack you, there's a very there's a big opening right around like a good place to attack, you know? The third outfit is this weird matching burgundy thing. It's like this kind of sweater which looks not necessarily it doesn't look that bad, but the pants are like made out of like plastic wrap or something. They got this weird red vinyl pants and once again it's like way up to almost to like the armpits like it's got that same kind of like old person structure also my family is downstairs um yelling because that's the only volume in which they can talk so if you can hear that i'm sorry there's nothing i can do about it if i did have something i could do about it i would have a long time ago but i don't so um yeah fourth option is this big white puffy jacket and these white pants. It almost looks like a ski outfit, but th there's like, it's cropped weirdly. Like it looks just like a ski outfit, like they've got the gloves and everything, but your midsection is going to be getting cold too. I and mean, you can't just like wear it out in normal weather either, because then you're going to be getting super hot from that big puffy coat thing. So, you know, not a whole lot of thermal considerations going on here. It's very unbalanced. I think I'm gonna have to go for the doormat costume because like to be direct honest none of these are good. This seems like the least bad if you know what I mean. Also don't know what that letter C is in the background but that's kind of you know it's a good bit of ambience environment structure setting. I don't know what I'm saying. Alright, question five is choose a new name, but it's all scientific French words. I'm not going to try for the French pronunciation for this one because I don't want to. I mean, like, I have a French last name in real life and people don't really ever try for it, which, uh, whether or not that's a good thing, it's up to you, but like, I know from experience, if you have a name like this, people are just going to like truncate it, like approximate it with English however they can. The first option is Sering, which I mean, it's written to rhyme with meringue. Maybe it should be Sering? Sering, ring. Yeah, I think that is actually closer to how you would pronounce it in French. So, right off the bat, that's like not great. And the meaning, too, is weird like syringe. Like, this seems like something you would, um, the name would, like, give off vibes that you're gonna, like, stab people or inject them with something, which is not a good way to develop a good first impression. The second word is, um, Bécher? Bécher would be the approximation, which overall, I guess, is not the worst of the three, but it's, it translates to Beaker, which isn't that, like, that one freaky thing off the Muppets, like, like, whenever you're, um, going to be picking out a name for whatever reason, you gotta, like, picture about how it could be turned into, like, a bullying thing, especially, like, it sounds like something you have to do only for worrying about their, like, childhood, assuming you're picking it for someone else, but, like, even into your adulthood, especially with, like, the way dynamics are online nowadays, that's something you gotta consider. And the last option is lentille, which looks a lot like lentil. In fact, I'm looking these up to get a rough idea of how to pronounce them, and it does also mean lentil, which is just like this weird seed plant. I mean, in the right context, it doesn't taste bad, but it'd be kind of like naming yourself like peas or whatever, you know? Like, hey, this is my buddy Broccoli. I guess, like I said before, none of these are great, but I guess I'm gonna have to go with, um, Beaker, whatever that's gonna be. Question six is, why do you think you turned out this way? First option is my jokes are too funny and my music taste is incredible. Um, clearly my jokes are not too funny given like how this video has been going for instance, but you know, I do have a great taste in music and just am like an amazing person all around, so that's something you gotta consider. The second option is I had an emo phase, which I didn't, I don't really, you know, I do enjoy some kind of like music in that general area like I didn't ever lean too heavy into that and I kind of I still dress similar to how I did in high school and I um still listen to that kind of music so 
if you do consider that an emo phase, I'm still like in it. So had wouldn't be a correct like verb tense there. And the third option is climate change, which probably is the most realistic answer. It is early September while I'm recording this, and it is like hotter than it has any right to be any time in the year. So, you know, I don't know how much of that is climate change and how much of that is just like I don't like weather. But it's either way, it's definitely impacting like how I am as a person right now. So I'm going to go for that one, I guess. And the last question is, what class do you wish existed? Example, Establishing Boundaries 205. I think there's an easy direct um, class to pick. Being funny on U YouTube. What um number do we want? I think, I don't want something like too high or low. I guess I'm going to go for like 30... How do you come up with numbers? 305? Sure, we'll go for that. Let's see what we get. We got, um, dropped into radioactive acid. It's like both acidic and radioactive. That seems kind of like overkill. That sounds like it hurt. Probably why your skincare routine is so dedicated now. And I mean, I guess this makes me like a Joker villain. I think we're basically like tied for the most popular, but that's like over 60%. It's like basically 60% of the people who took this quiz got one of these options, so I don't know what I'm saying. I guess that's how percentages work. The higher percentages tend to be more popular than the lower ones. And I guess we're going to give it five stars as always. This was kind of a weaker video, kind of a weird one too. I don't really know how it turned out, but I still got to figure out like my editing style. I figured I still got to figure out how I'm going to... Um, deal with the quizzes and stuff going forwards because like I feel like this should ideally be my best content but I'm still kind of like struggling with the format how to exactly to approach these so you know that's partially what this video is for I'm just kind of playing around here playing around in the space we'll see if this video is any good or not at the end probably not but who knows